This is Robin Parker. I am a librarian at the Kellogg Health Sciences Library, and for this presentation on searching the literature for systematic reviews, I will give an overview of the five phases for conducting a good comprehensive search. The first step for conducting a good search is to take a look for existing systematic reviews, either directly addressing your question or related to one or more aspects of your question. The second step involves carrying out a scoping search to develop your search strategy. Next, you will conduct the full systematic search using multiple sources. Fourth, you will need to update the search during the review process in order to make sure you've included the most recent research. And finally, even after publication, you should keep track of the new research on your topic to keep the review up to date. The purpose of the first phase, searching for existing systematic reviews, is to reaffirm whether there is a need for a new systematic review on your topic. If there is already a recent, well-conducted systematic review on precisely your review question, it would be a good idea to revise your question to investigate a topic not yet covered. Secondly, if there are reviews pertaining to one or more aspect of your question, but not exactly the same, or if there is an older review on your topic, you will be able to use these reviews as resources as you develop your search strategy. By examining the methods, full search strategies, and references of these existing reviews, you can discover search terms and identify relevant studies. When you are looking for existing reviews, you will check a, a number of sources. These include the Cochrane Library, which will help identify reviews included in the Cochrane Database of Systematic Reviews, DARE, otherwise known as the Database of Abstracts of Reviews of Effects, as well as the Health Technology Assessment Database. General databases such as PubMed, Embase, and CINAHL can also be used to search for systematic reviews. Pra clinical practice guidelines are also can be based on systematic reviews, so related guidelines should be checked for additional citations. Also, the TRIP database, which is a meta search engine, can be used to locate systematic reviews and guidelines. Finally, experts in the field may be able to direct you to other systematic reviews. As an exercise, Look for a systematic review on at least one aspect of your topic. In other words, a review with the same population or a similar intervention or exposure. Identify the search strategy by looking in the methods section and any relevant appendices. Start collecting search terms, including index terms and free text words from that search strategy that you can use in your own search strategy for your systematic review. In the next step, you will develop and test your search strategy, starting in one or two databases. This will help you identify major trials on the topic and lead to further refinement of your search and possibly revision of your review question. The scoping search will yield citations that can provide you with additional search terms in order to create a comprehensive search strategy. This may involve an iterative process wherein you refine your, your question based on the volume of results and the breadth of the research on the topic. This step provides a chance to test and refine your question your search strategy, and the inclusion-exclusion criteria. The scoping search will give you a better idea of what, what type and how much relevant literature is out there, leading to a stronger research proposal. This information will also help you determine the amount of resources that will be needed in terms of time and money in order to complete the whole project. The next stage of the search process involves the running of this full systematic search. This is done once the review question is completely finalized and the full search strategy has been developed and tested. At this point, the search strategy will be adapted to all the relevant databases and information sources that you have identified to search for the review. During the full systematic search, you will search any grade literature sources you have determined would be appropriate. You may also need to check for unpublished or ongoing studies by contacting drug companies or following up with authors and experts. In addition, you may want to manually search certain journals to check for unindexed references to relevant studies. You can check with the trial search coordinator from the related Cochrane Review Group to see which journals should be searched. I will discuss the sources to check for studies in more detail in the next section of this series. Because reviews often take a long time to complete, it is important to rerun the searches in order to check for newly published or released studies. This step can be easily accomplished if you have saved your searches. Most databases will allow you to save your search in a personal account that you can set up for free. Rerunning the search is then as easy as clicking on the saved strategy. 
Even once your review is published, you should rerun the search periodically to check for new research on the topic. The Cochrane Collaboration, for example, recommends that reviews be updated every two years, or more frequently, in emerging or prolific fields. In order for the systematic review to be kept up to date, it is essential to document the search strategies and the methods in a systematic and detailed way so that the search can be reproduced reliably. There are many sources that should be considered when searching for relevant trials on your topic. In the next section, I will go over these options in more detail.